Um, so um, what I wanted to uh, talk about in this uh, talk is, um, is actually look at security. Uh, not necessarily from an application point of view, but um, I wanted to go into the internals of how security works in a distributed application, especially on Hadoop. So if you are building your own application, uh, maybe not using Apex, or if you're trying to uh, do something directly on Hadoop, um, you know, what are the things that you need to uh, look at, right? Um, uh, how many of you are familiar with uh, Kerberos uh, security on Hadoop? Okay, that's great, all right. Okay, uh, so I'll skip through the introduction of Apex. I think you've seen that probably enough number of times now. Um, and directly go to this slide. So, uh, well, maybe a slide before this. So, uh, as you know, right, uh, when you're building application in Apex, uh, you create these operators and then you connect them up and then you launch it. Uh, so what happens on the cluster is uh, you have now uh, all these operators running as different processes. We are exchanging data with each other. There is a master process that's basically making sure everything's running fine orchestrating things in case there's a failure, collecting stats, doing all that kind of things. Uh, and of course, there are programs that you use to launch. For example, if you use our UI console or you're using the command line client, you know, those are interacting with Hadoop to initially launch your application. Um, so there's all these different interactions going on, right? So the rule of thumb is everything needs to be authenticated, right? In a secure environment, any of these inter-process talking, chatting that's happening, whether it's one, one operator is talking to another operator to get the data, or whether the operator is talking to the master, whether the whether operator is talking to name node to write something to HDFS, whether the launcher is talking to Hadoop to launch, all these all these uh, communication and interprocess uh, service calls need to be authenticated. Right. So that's the that's the high level background and how this happens is what I'm going to talk about. Right. So the first thing is uh, you need to have secure Hadoop. So you set up, you enable Kerberos on, on your Hadoop cluster. Uh, you can optionally enable SSL, um, but you may not because you may be in a, in a private uh, enterprise space and, and you, you're probably okay there. Um, and uh, you may or may not enable Kerberos on the Hadoop web services, right? So the management console of, like for example, Yarn or things like that, you may, may or may not enable Kerberos there. So, but, that, but you, that's the first step. You probably already do that uh, if you are having secure, secure Hadoop. So the next step is, um, you know, how does uh, a running application work on secure Hadoop? And then how does our UI console and gateway and monitoring tools work on secure Hadoop, right? So these are the last two, second two pieces are the ones what we're gonna cover. Um, how to enable security on Hadoop, that's, you probably will find it with all the distros and, and we don't need to cover it here. So before I do that, I will just give a very brief background on Kerberos. So, uh, so Hadoop cluster is a, is a distributed uh, environment with multiple machines, multiple services, multiple users. So in a, in a distributed environment like this, and you have a lot of these uh, authentications going on between users and services, between services and services, uh, Kerberos is, uh, is an uh, is a, uh, authentication mechanism that's widely used for this kind of uh, uh, distributed uh, authentication uh, systems. Uh, in fact, uh, if I, if I'm, I believe that even Active Directory in Windows is actually based off of Kerberos. I think it's a, it's a variation of Kerberos. Uh, so, and Hadoop supports Kerberos as the default de facto authentication mechanism. So when you enable security in Hadoop, you're actually enabling um, uh, Kerberos. It's, it's interactions with Kerberos. Um, now, Kerberos actually requires um, a principal and a key tab for every, um, every uh, uh, whether it's a user or a service, uh, so that's its credentials, right? Every, uh, uh, every piece of this, uh, uh, every actor in this system needs to have these credentials. Um, so users, uh, user credentials um, are, are, are uh, pretty um, conventional, so user has a username, uh, and its user's principal looks like username at domain, uh, he, he has a password or a key tab. And services that run on fixed nodes also have their service principles and key tabs. So for example, Yarn has a principal and a key tab. Name node has a um, so principal and a key tab. So all these things, right? However, when it comes to applications, uh, applications can be deployed anywhere, right? So you just launch it, it could run on any node, right? And you can have hundreds of applications. So it's not practical to create principles and key tabs for every application, every operator, every app master, right? 
So for that, case, for that, for that reason, Hadoop supports a second mode of authentication for, for apps called delegation tokens. Uh, so delegation token is, is, is just ki kind of like a token. Like think of like if you're doing OAuth, like an OAuth token, right? So it's a token by which uh, anybody who wants to talk to, any application that wants to talk to Jan um, needs to pass the token. And then if the token is valid, Jan will allow access. Right? So we'll talk about how applications can get access to these tokens uh, and, and use that for communication. Right? So let's start with the very first step. So the very first step you do with Apex, first, the very first step you do is actually build your application, which is covered by other talks. And then once it's ready, once you've compiled it and everything, you have now a, a binary that you want to launch. You can launch it two ways. You can use the CLI from Apex. Um, basically, it's an interactive CLI. Um, you can just uh, you can run it, and then you can call a command called launch, and you pass your, uh, your binary, application binary. And then it starts the process of launching the application. So it does a few things uh, right on the, on the client machine and then deploys everything onto the Hadoop cluster, and then application starts on the Hadoop cluster, right? Uh, the other way is of you can use our UI console to do that. Um, so in this case, uh, what, so from a security perspective, I'm just going to look at what are the interactions that the CLI does that needs to be secured. Uh, so I'm just going to, be, I'm going to look at everything from that perspective, right? So uh, CLI um, talks to uh, both YAN and HDFS. So it talks to HDFS because it takes all your application jars, puts them in HDFS so that when the application's running on her cluster, it has access to the jars. Uh, and then it talks to resource manager to um, basically, um, make, it makes a request to basically get a new application ID, uh, set up a container, the first container, and start the application master. Uh, now, this is, uh, this, in this case, the authentication is very simple because the Apex, uh, the CLI, is you, you run it from fixed node. So actually, when you're launching applications in uh, Apex applications, you don't need to install Apex on all the machines. You just install on one machine. It could be one, a machine that's already part of your Hadoop cluster, or it could be a machine that just has network access to the Hadoop cluster. So since it's a fixed um, thing on one node, uh, you can actually create Kerberos credentials and use them for the CLI. So you can go to your Kerberos server, uh, create new Kerberos credentials, and then assign it to the CLI. And CLI will happily use it and connect to uh, Hadoop and launch your app. If you don't have Kerberos credentials, then CLI will not be able to do that. Hadoop will deny that, right? So in this case, uh, it's it's fairly simple, and um, you know the, this uh, uh, this slide shows you you know how you specify the principle and the key tab for CLI. Um, and uh, anyway, so this is more pedantic, and you know you can always get this to the slides later and look at the actual property names, right? So now let's look at uh, applic uh, application has been submitted, and now it's starting to run. What are the different interactions that happen within the application and how we secure them? Um, okay, so this is the, how a, a running application looks like, right? Um, so you have an application master, so every application has one application master. So it's the first thing we start. So the CLI starts the application master and then application master looks at your application and then figures out how many operators, how many containers, and then it starts all those containers. Because Hadoop doesn't know Apex, right? Hadoop doesn't know how you built your application. It'll only start our application master, which we tell it to. So uh, let's say you have three operators, and um, by default, uh, we would create three containers and put each of those operators in those individual containers. Okay? So in this case, I'm showing you just two containers. They're two operators. Um, now let's look at all the interactions, right? So the application master needs to talk to um, Jan and uh, HDF, uh, HDFS, so that's the resource manager name node. Uh, now the individual containers uh, talk to app master periodically. So what do they do? What kind of chatter do they have, right? So they periodically send out their stats, so the operator tells how much, you know, how it's performing. Um, and then uh, the application master actually makes those metrics available via web services. Uh, and then um, also if there is any changes, like for example, if uh, you, there's dynamic partitioning or dynamic scaling going on, then the application master will send commands um, you know, f to, uh, to these containers to, to start, uh, to start uh, new operators and so on. And similarly, if there's a failure, um, let's say there's an, one operator fails and um, it's being recovered, its downstream operator will also be reset to the previous checkpoint. So those kinds of commands will go back from the application master uh, to the container. So that, uh, that path uh, 
of communication should be authenticated as well. So uh, interaction between container and app master. Now between uh, the two operators, right? So if you have two operators connected uh, and the upstream operator is sending data to the downstream operator, right? So the downstream operator should also authenticate with this upstream operator bef before it can get the data. Otherwise, anybody can tap in on your network and get the data, right? So there is an interaction there. And uh, if you remember from the earlier uh, talk that I had, um, there is a buffering mechanism that we automatically uh, enable with every operator. Uh, this is so that uh, in case there is a failure of the downstream operator and it, it restarts, it can just pull the old data from the buffer and the upstream operator doesn't have to go back. It can continue from where it is, where it, where it was. So basically, so there is a, there's a buffer server authentication that happens in, in that case. And then the individual containers where your operators are, they also probably, uh, you know, they may be talking to HDFS, for example, to store your checkpoints and so on. So that uh, there also authentication uh, needs to happen. Uh, so in all these cases, right, like I mentioned earlier, the application master and the containers are, f are they're not on fixed nodes, so they don't have Kerberos credentials. So they use these delegation tokens to talk to Hadoop. So the, uh, both the uh, resource manager and the name node, they have delegation tokens. And the application master uses the delegation tokens uh, to authenticate and request services. But how does the application master get those delegation tokens in the first place, right? That happens from the CLI. So the CLI, before when it was launching the application, because it has Kerberos credentials, it would connect to resource manager, request the delegation tokens, get the delegation tokens, and pass it along uh, in, the, in the request to launch uh, the application master. So that the application master, when it starts, already has those delegation tokens. Now, the same process happens when application master is actually starting all these containers. In this case, application master is, is acting like the delegation token server, right? So it issues its own delegation tokens, and it seeds the containers. So when the containers start, the containers have the delegation tokens to talk to the app master. Similarly, it also issues them the buffer server tokens so that the operators can um, can talk. To, one operators uh, can talk to the get the data from the upstream buffer server. Okay, so uh, these these slides basically explain. I mean. Uh, in, uh, what I, I mean, basically they show what I what I've just explained. Um, so and and uh, one quick thing I'll I'll add is uh, most of this communication is actually RPC. So when Stram is making calls to Hadoop, uh, it's actually making RPC calls. The only exception is actually container to container. The data flow that's not RPC because RPC is not designed for high speed data flow. Uh, it's our own uh, custom um, low level uh, uh, network I/O that happens. Okay, and can so it's essentially um, yeah. So uh, this is basically talking about the um, the to what I explained. Okay, so let's look at the um, at the next part, which is the web services. Um, so the so uh, Stram it basically is collecting all the stats from all these containers. And it's aggregating all the stats and then making them available uh, over web services. This is so that um, you know you can have some sort of monitoring or management tool that can query and get those stats, right? So now when the monitoring tool connects to Stram, it needs to authenticate as well, right? But here the issue is that the monitoring tool is some some application that Stram doesn't know about, so it has never issued a delegation token to it or anything like that. And Stam itself does not have Kerberos credentials, so it, we cannot do Kerberos authentication. So what do we do in this case? So in this case, we take a hybrid approach where we make the use of um, a proxy that is available by, um, from Hadoop. So what happens is uh, every web service um, that a, any application master exposes is also accessible via the proxy server. So there's a web proxy server that Hadoop runs. Uh, and you can access that we, uh, web service of the, of the underlying uh, application master by talking to this proxy server. And this proxy server, since it's on a fixed node, um, it can authenticate you using Kerberos. Right? So it will use Kerberos over HTTP, which is called Spenego, um, if you're familiar with it. Uh, so what will happen is, let's say the client is a browser, which is trying to access the web service. Um, it will basically first go to, it needs to first go to the resource manager proxy and authenticate with Kerberos there, and then the proxy will talk to the uh, Stram web service. The web service will issue a token, and the token goes back to the client, 
then the client can use that token in future to directly talk to the uh, SRAM web service. Okay. Now, uh, um, if you are familiar with Kerberos, you know that um, having um, having do, doing Kerberos or for web services or, or web websites web pages is really painful because as a user you need to actually log in to Kerberos from your separately from your terminal. Then you have to configure your browser to use those Kerberos credentials. It's it's not a straightforward process, right? So not many people actually enable. Um, authentication on the uh, on the web services so we actually want to give people the flexibility to whether to enable or disable the web uh, web authentication on on the stram web service as well so we have a property you can do that uh, if you say enable then essentially it's enabled if you say follow hadoop authentication that means if kerberos is enabled on hadoop then we enable authentication on the web services if you say follow hadoop http auth then it's basically mirrors um, the web service settings, um, the, the security settings on Hadoop web services, and disable, essentially disables that authentication. So this is like a neat little valve that you can use to control web service authentication. Um, so the next uh, actually is a very interesting uh, um, thing. So when uh, Hadoop was initially designed, they didn't envision long-running applications, right? So they thought an you know, application may run, a f may run a few hours, maybe a day, so what happens is these delegation tokens that are issued, they have an expiry period. So they only are valid for seven days. Uh, even within seven days, there's a renewal process, but after seven days, they're not valid. Uh, I mean, that period of seven days can be changed by reconfiguring Hadoop, but nobody does that, right? And you don't want to do that. So this poses a problem for, uh, for us, because in a, typically an APEC application is a long-running application. You just, you just keep it running. You probably may, never, may shut it down after months or a year. So, how do we then, uh, how, are the, uh, how can we still then continue to communicate with Hadoop after seven days, right? Uh, so for that, uh, what we actually do is um, we, uh, internally the application, before the seven day period is, ends, uh, uses Kerberos credentials to fetch new delegation tokens. So there are some, uh, some uh, certain Kerberos credentials are actually packaged and, and deployed with the application and they're just used for fetching these new delegation tokens, right? So, um, so the, here are the other settings. So you can you, see, you can specify the you part to a key tab file in HDFS, and uh, this will be the key tab that uh, the application will use to fetch the delegation tokens before they are they are expired. Okay. Um, next, look at um, the uh, so 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 far we covered. Uh, launching an application from CLI and an application that's running on Hadoop cluster, right? Now, let's say you you, were, you wanted to build a UI tool like we have on on, on with, with our data and management console, and we wanted that UI tool to be able to work in this environment, in the secure Hadoop environment. So what would be the um, uh, requirements for that UI tool? Uh, what, what would it need to do, right? So um, so our UI tool is called, it's called console, and the backend service is called gateway. So, uh, so Gateway first needs to be able to talk to Hadoop, uh, secure, Hadoop uh, secure Hadoop using Kerberos. Then it also needs to be able to talk to the individual application, ma application masters. Uh, and the second thing is you may also want to enable some sort of authentication uh, for your UI console, right? You don't want users to just get access to everything. You, you want some sort of authentication and you probably want to, it to be integrated with your, uh, whatever you're using in your enterprise, like LDAP, Active Directory, PAM, whatever, right? So uh, Gateway, in fact, supports uh, these, these, uh, this functionality. So let's take a look at uh, you know, what are the interactions uh, as far as Gateway is concerned. So, um, uh, so, so for first of all, Gateway needs to talk to Hadoop. And since Gateway is also running on a fixed node, it can just use Kerberos credentials to talk to both YAN and HDFS. Uh, but to talk to the application master, um, it needs to follow the the proxy web uh, the web service proxy um, uh, paradigm that I mentioned earlier, right? So it has to first get a token um, by going through the proxy service and then use the token to authenticate with application master. Okay. Um, so here, uh, so essentially, because it needs Kerberos, it needs to talk to Hadoop. It needs the Kerberos credential. So these are the properties that you would use. Uh, you basically have a, a principal and a key tab that you specify for gateway, and it'll use that uh, to authenticate uh, to, with Hadoop. Uh, 
Um, and then uh, here's uh, uh, this is an interesting topic as well. So now let's say you have users logging in into your UI console, right? Um, and then the UI console needs to let's say then you want, let's say you have a user log into the console and he wants to launch an application. So when he launches an application, you want the application on the Hadoop cluster to run as the user, right? But you don't want to package every user's principal and key tab with your, with, with your service, with your console, right? That breaks security. Um, so for that, um, Hadoop provides a method called impersonation. It's, it's, it's kind of like sudo, right? So what, what you can do is you can just use one set of Kerberos credentials for your management service. And the management service can um, act on behalf of the user who's logged in. So you log in into your service, and so you have a username, right? And you basically pass on that username to Hadoop, but still use um, your own system's uh, Kerberos credentials. But when the app gets launched, it will actually run as the user. It won't run as the app user. So this is called Hadoop impersonation. Um, and to, to do that, uh, first of all, there's a first a property where, uh, whether you want that or not. So there's a property in Gateway, in our, in our UI console, where you can say whether to launch as the auth user, whether to launch as a system user, or, or, or a specific user. Uh, but let's say you, you typically go with auth user, so you basically want to launch the app as the user who, um, who logged in. So the first thing you need to do is in Hadoop, you need to allow the system user to impersonate the person who's, all the people who are going logged in, right? So here's the, these are the Hadoop settings that you'll have to configure on the Hadoop side, telling that this sister u system user um, can now impersonate all the normal users. Uh, so the username here would be the system user. Uh, and then, uh, once you do that, that's all it takes. Uh, and then the gateway uh, will basically be able to impersonate. It will basically, um, when it submits jobs and things like that, uh, it will basically use the username of the person who's logged in, even though the underlying Kerberos cred credentials are its own. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's all. Uh, I want to cover. I have some resources, and I'll take some questions if you have any.